led to gunfire at a metro area auto parts store. And in the past 15 minutes, we learned the suspect now faces new charges, murder among the new charges. An O'Reilly's employee is accused of pulling out a gun and shooting the victim several times. Channel 2's Dave Huddleston live in Clayton County. So Dave, you talked with the victim's parents about what happened. We sure did, Justin, and those new charges also include aggravated assault and possession of a weapon during a crime. That family, I believe, still in shock after all of this. Their son is gone, and that worker is behind bars. He was just standing in line, waiting patiently to purchase his stuff. Willie Heath Jr. painfully talking about his son, Willie III, who was gunned down Thursday at this O'Reilly Auto Parts store in Jonesboro. These are pictures the family gave me of the 25-year-old victim. Police told me they're still investigating, but Angelique Heath says store employees told her what happened. I spoke to people at the store, and it was an employee from another location that came in to bring some batteries to a store. He bumped my child and never say excuse me. That led to a confrontation and gunfire. When my son did decide to run, he just, from the inside of the store, he got the down and took his life. Channel 2 Action News was on the scene Thursday, moments after the shooting. 26-year-old Raheem Titre was charged with aggravated assault. We were at the family's home while police were still there talking with them. Angelique Heath says she talked with her son moments before he went to the store. My child last words to me. He told me, God got me. He said, God got me. I'm going to be okay. Again, those updated charges now include murder. I called and talked with a media representative from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. They said they didn't have the authority to talk to us, but would have someone call us back from the legal department. We're still waiting to get that response. Reporting live from Clayton County, Dave Huddleston, Channel 2 Action News. Unfortunately, it's been a violent Memorial Day weekend with more than a dozen people shot, some fatally. In Brooklyn, a 45-year-old TSA employee was gunned down. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner spoke to that man's sister, who says she was on the phone with her brother when he was killed. He's like, um, I'm on my way. I'm walking like a madman. And before I can say to him, why did you say that phrase? I heard three to four shots on the phone with him. And after that, it was a pause. Pashana Davey recounts the last heartbreaking exchange she had with her brother, 45-year-old Donovan Davey. It was just after midnight Sunday. She says he was taking longer than expected to come from his job as a TSA officer at JFK Airport to their mom's house, so she called. Moments after, the conversation was cut short. So I'm saying, Donovan, Donovan, Donovan. And in my heart, gets lower and lower. Seconds later, she heard authorities around him. She ran two blocks from their mom's over to Church Avenue and East 35th Street, where she saw he was on the ground with gunshot wounds to the neck and leg. I ran up close only to see my brother on the floor, sh trembling, shaking, shaking, shaking like he's fighting. <laughs> he's fighting. So I'm like, they're doing CPR on him. She says food he had picked up was on the ground too, and that he previously stopped at an ATM. She says in this surveillance video from across the street, you see the silhouette of Davey walking when someone comes up behind him and runs away down 35th Street. Police sources tell us Davey has no criminal record and that this was a targeted shooting, but the motive is unclear. Police say according to their video, there was no contact with the suspect prior to the gunshots. Why did somebody do this to somebody so pure and somebody that has so much to give to the society that has that wanted to build the community? His sister says he worked at the TSA for almost 20 years and spoke multiple languages. Helping us with the bomb threats, helping us to protect our city by doing his job. In East Flatbush, Brooklyn, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. It's still unclear whether any mole money was stolen from Davey. Police have not released any information yet about the suspect. Today is Sunday, June 50, years 2022. Welcome to Nigga Real, y'all. Those two videos, that are just two news clips I uh, just posted. A young man getting shot and killed in Atlanta at an auto parts store for accidentally bumping into an employee. Um... He went into the store to go purchase some Freon for his car. Um, 
while in the store waiting in line, an employee comes in and brings some batteries, and two black guys just happen to bump into each other, uh, resulting in one being shot and killed, the other one being charged with murder. I mean, it's kind of like, what in the hell did happened there? Did they know each other? I mean, was this just a chance encounter? Uh, I don't think they even knew each other. I just think there's something, something terribly went wrong there where another man decided, you bumped into me. They probably had a few words. Man, man, what the fuck, fuck, you know, whatever could have happened there. I've seen this stuff happen. They couldn't resolve the issue. And so an employee who's at work dropping off batteries from another location decides to pull out a gun and shoot somebody thinking this makes sense. Now he's in jail charged with murder. And this 25-year-old man lost his life. In the other situation in New York, another young black man shot and killed, walked, left, went, picked up food at a restaurant, and probably made the fatal error of going to an ATM machine, not really watching his surroundings. And someone probably robbed him. So I'm take cash off the ATM and, and shot. You know, I probably took the money and ran or something. I don't use ATM machines, period. Yeah, I don't. If I, I, I just don't use ATMs. If I can't, there's, I don't go to an ATM unless it's 12 noon in broad daylight. I just, they're too dangerous. You have too many people watching people go to these ATM machines with the full, full intentions of robbing you. And some people, don't give a damn about your life. And here's the crazy part. This is happening every day in our black community. Every day somebody, young, a young black man or a black man has been shot and killed by another black person. You won't hear any protests. There won't be any marching. There won't be any news. You'll see some occasional news stories. These two stories were lucky to make the news. You won't hear no outcry from the community other than from the family members of the, the one of the deceased. It's scary being a black person in America because you don't know what might happen when you encounter another black person. And, and in those circumstances, you know, these the, the incident at the, uh, the auto parts store happened in broad daylight in the middle of, of a, a store. This man was running for his life and the guy literally shot him through the window. He was running away. What was the purpose of shooting that man through that damn window? Well, I didn't understand that. I didn't, I didn't get that. And I could probably point out article after news article after video after news report about these types of incidents that are happening daily in our communities. There were some there were some incidents reports just from last night, and I was going to download the report. I said, uh, "Y'all, I, we I would have I wouldn't be I wouldn't even be able to do this commentary because I'd have so many news videos that just in the past few days of people being killed." in our community um, for nothing, no reason. They bumped into each other at an auto parts store. And that's it. I've been bumped into in all kinds of places. I just say, excuse me, oops, I'm sorry. And keep it moving. I don't understand this pent up anger that you, you the guy who did the shooting was at work. He had a gun on him at work. Now, there's another story, and I was going to post this one. A McDonald's worker near the neighborhood I just moved from, I told you I got the hell out of Nickelville. There's a McDonald's on Moreland Avenue, at I-20 and Moreland Avenue. The manager was shot in an critical condition by her employee that she sent home. So he, because he was, he wasn't working. Uh, something's about he was moving slow. He wasn't doing something. This happened the day before yesterday. And he went home, got a gun, and came back. And she was out there talking to him. And I guess he decided he didn't like what he had, she had to say. And he shot her multiple times in broad daylight at his job. Y'all, I don't really say much when I, when I to, to people I bump into or I, I have encounters with and people are, stuff is going south. I don't, I've learned to just say, okay, and just kind of walk away. 
I don't get into these arguments with people. I don't care who it is. I don't care where it's at. I don't care if it's at Macy's or the park. I don't care. I'm just a cool person. So I'm not going to get into it with somebody because you bumped into me or um, a traffic violation. Somebody pulls up my ass speeding. I get over. I look up. I, I keep. I'm, I'm always watching my surroundings when I'm driving. Always watching the cars to the left, to the right, my rearview mirror. That's what you're supposed to do. You see a car pulling up on your ass, <laughs> and I get over. I don't need to know over there. I get way, way over here. You can go right on here because you're in a bit of a rush. I'm not. I don't. I try to avoid car accidents. I try to avoid reckless drivers. I try to stay out of nigga. Let me be very honest with you all. Certain parts of town, I'm not going. I never forget somebody wanted me to go somewhere. Hamilton Road on National Highway. I can't remember. I said, I don't go over there to deal with them crazy niggas over there driving like maniacs. It seems like as soon as you touch down in these black, horrible neighborhoods, they got these raggedy ass cars. They driving like bats out of hell. They speed. And I was like, okay, I don't go to those areas. Just not safe. <laughs> Ain't nothing on Camden Road I want. Nothing. I don't need to be on Camden Road. I don't need to be on Old National Highway. Y'all ain't rolled up Old National Highway in God knows how long. About a, over a year ago, somebody says this barbershop I want you to go to to do your beard. I rode out there to that path. And then didn't even, after I risked my life, yeah, I risked my life taking 85 to 285 to Old National Highway. I was down in the middle of that. If that ain't, if Old National Highway ain't the picture of Niggerville, I don't know. That's, that's Main Street in Niggerville. And then you get to the barbershop. Made an appointment with this man, and then he says, we need somebody else to come out here, and that person fucked the beard up. I said, okay, this was a waste of risk of my life to come out here to nigga, and I ain't never went back. You know, man, I made an appointment with this man specifically because he's we're supposed to be doing this really great thing, but now I cut my own beard, you know, shit, to save some money and gas and time and risking my life going to Niggerville for a haircut. And learn my fucking lesson. Yep, drove all the way out there. Just to get my beard fucked up by some other barber in the barbershop that clearly ain't had, had just got out of prison or whatever. That man would tell me he would just serve something. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't with the way I wanted to be cut. He's like, you gonna come back and you know, hang, you know. And I'm, I'm, he just got out of jail. I don't know. I don't really go to a lot of barbershops over the past few years. I, I tend to keep barbershops to be. Maybe it's just me. But every time I go into these barbershops, there's always some nigga shit going on. It's always some craziness of some type. Just foolish behavior. And um, that barbershop on National Highway was packed with all these people. This man that made this appointment. I made an appointment and clearly he overbooked his stuff. Everybody's waiting to get their beards shaped up by him because he did just. But long story short, I ain't going out there to nigga mail no more. It ain't worth the risk. It ain't worth, it's not worth risking my health and my life. I avoid certain areas. And uh, unfortunately, this incident that happened at O'Reilly, I believe it was out pretty far in the black neighborhood. I think it was out there on, on, in, in College Park, if I'm correct. Um, I'm pretty sure that this happened uh, out there off Old National Highway. Y'all excuse me, but I gotta take care of this. Somebody, I have a uh, roofer coming over here. He, he needs addressing in. They installed some vent stacks on the roof of the bathroom, and before it rains, we need to get, I need to get him over here to inspect it and make sure they close it up right so I won't have water leaking in on my head over here. God forbid that. I don't even know my damn address. But please forgive me, because I need this man to come over here and I'm texting him his address. Because before it rains tomorrow, I need to make sure that they did this right. And I'm not saying that they didn't do it right, but I want him to inspect it. I'm paying him to come out and inspect it. Plus, I need some, there's some loose shingles on the roof. I need him to put those shingles back in place. There's always something out here at this house. <laughs> yeah, with a Remax sign. Whew. It's heartbreaking to read these stories about black folks, black young men being shot and killed. I'll never forget my friend Solomon. Man, Solomon stood up in my house and we were talking about the pandemic and how he wanted to live his life. And I'm saying, dude, you just like just kind of need to chill for a second. And God, I just wish I had really been a little bit more forceful in in, 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 in letting him know it's dangerous out there, man. You just need to just kind of hang out. You know, he was telling me about this, this, this new friend that was coming to town. And I just wish... 
If I can go back to that conversation I had in my home with Solomon before he was shot and killed just a few days later, um, every you want, we want to live our lives, and you shouldn't live in fear. But y'all, there's certain things I'm not doing. Last night, I was driving around, went to a gas station. I don't know, I went to Kroger's, got some gas. And the gas pump shut off kind of early. I said, damn. But when I went to go read the thing where you get your gas at, the, the digital thing wasn't working. So I immediately should have just said, start putting more gas in there to make sure that the tank was, was full. Just, I made a mistake and drove on off. Then, then I, as I was drove off, I got down the road, I realized, shit, with no gas in the damn car. The damn thing shut off too soon. They didn't really get no gas in there. So I meant I had to make another stop at another gas station later on. But by this time, the sun had went down, and I was like, well, shit, should I stop over here in Niggerville? I, I drive on cruise on through Niggerville and, and go out to a better area. I ended up driving on up closer to my house and driving up into Gwinnett, um, so on the highway. So the choice was get off in Clarkston and get some gas. Mm -mm. <coughs> I drive on up to Mount Industrial, get some gas. That's kind of like on the, on the iffy side. There's a quick trip. I forgot about that quick trip on Mount Industrial. I could get me a hot dog line and then some donuts. But I ended up driving on up 78 and going to this gas station up there where there's all these white folks just cheerful and they making sodas and kids running around. It's a happy environment. You know? Isn't it funny how Niggerville can just be just a few exits away and all of a sudden you get the white folks heaven. I'm not saying the white folks have places to have. They show sure it's safer though. That young man who went into that auto parts store and was shot and killed, that was ridiculous. This TSA, TSA worker, this man was, um, worked for TSA for 20, 30 years. You get shot and, and, and just a few blocks away from his home and picked up some food. He went to that ATM machine and I think he was robbed. Y'all don't go to ATM machines. I just don't. Unless it's in broad daylight. I'll walk into a bank and get cash before I go to I'm just dead serious. Because they watch these ATM machines and they'll follow you. So I'll go into a bank, get my money, put it in my pocket. Nobody knows what you're in that bank doing. You know, most of the time ain't nobody in any damn way. But them ATM machines, mm-mm, stay away. Avoid them. You'd be better off going to a grocery store and get a little extra cash back. It might be a little bit safer. But they sit then watch those ATM machines. I had a friend one time, he got some cash out of the ATM machine. These people fall on the throat and they bumped his car. And so he gets out to see the damage and they, they robbed his ass. <laughs> give it up, give it up. They knew he went to that ATM machine and unfortunately they took his money. Lucky he, he, he lived. But I told him to bump your car is the oldest trick in the book. If somebody bumps your car and it's late at night or something, you just left the ATM machine or you know you have cash or something, your car has been bumped. I might want to just keep on moving on down the road. You all, you, everybody wants to jump out and protect their cars all of a sudden. That's the oldest trick in the book, that, that, the car bump. And they take your car away from you. And you left there and you, you know, people have been car bumped and shot and killed in the car taken away. I don't know why anybody was shot, shoot and kill anyone over. Um, there were a lot of people shot and killed here in Atlanta who were robbed uh, just petty stuff Niggerville is a dangerous place and we just keep remaining in these areas you know I have a friend who bought this expensive house in a very rough area the first day I went to go down there and visit him there was news media there had just been a shootout at a house literally a few doors down from his house and news media police all this stuff going on and his house was beautiful, but I was thinking to myself, I don't know if I could have bought this house in this environment. And I have owned homes in rough neighborhoods, but his rough neighborhood take the motherfucking cake. I ain't never seen so many Nick po niggas walking up and down the streets. It's just, oh, you know what? Because it's off Camden Road. And it's just horrible over there. It's horrible. I mean, it is horrible over there. And I just drive, and every time I drive over there, I said, man, why? But he, you know, he got what he can afford, I guess, but it was, it was for, what, for what he paid. And here's the funny part, right next to him, they're about to build some half a million dollar townhouse. I said, they're building some $500,000 townhouse over here? I said, who going buy this shit? You have to be insane. All this 
Riff Raff, all them housing projects and Section 8 housing up and down that street, all that mess. Is somebody going to pay for it? I say, oh, the devil is a lie. I can sit over here. This is a quiet day, but I'm going to. Very quiet. There are no apartments. Zero for my house. I mean, not one. There are, there's no bus service over here. Zippo. The buses do not come over here. How that happened? This is DeKalb County, which is funny to me, but there ain't no buses over here. They stop way, way, way. Quiet neighborhood, well maintained. Um, they're repaving the streets over here. Every other house has a dumpster. This house is going to be, this home, their neighborhood is going to be revitalization. It's safe over here. At least it feels safe to me. I mean, anything could happen anywhere. But there's no riffraff of running up and down these streets. I have literally been in this yard working in the front yard, and I haven't seen a car drive by in hours. I mean, I, you just, there's no, if you go outside, it's quiet as a mouse over here. I like, this is better for me than in a neighborhood full of niggas. And I know you all forgive me because we, know, we all we do know there are some very nice upscale middle class black neighborhoods. I look at some neighborhoods. There's a neighborhood called Guilford Forest in South Fulton County. And I look at some houses in there. The only problem I have with Guilford Forest, that shit was too damn high. I was like, these niggas are their damn mind over here. They want a lot of money for this stuff over here. And then you still got to leave about a Guilford Forest in Southwest of Cab County and go over there to the shopping nigga mm -mm, I'm tired. You get tired of dealing with poor ass neighborhoods. A lot of black neighborhoods up class up middle class or upscale black neighborhoods is kind of surrounded by that element <clears throat> the nigga bill. and I, you get tired of it I mean unless you're going to plan on shopping on um, eBay I mean not eBay but you know having the groceries delivered and Prime Amazon Prime doing all that stuff I'm assuming a lot of people probably do do that probably need to do that over here I finally went to the grocery store last night I picked up a few things but it's frightening when you turn on the news every day and you see these dangerous areas where people have lost their life uh, for no reason. It was clearly these two news reports are just a prime example of something that probably should never have happened. And it's heartbreaking to see black men shot and killed on a regular basis and no one saying anything. No one cares. Uh, I'm, and maybe I'm missing, I mean, just seriously, nobody say anything. It's a silence. And it's very disheartening that so many of us are being killed daily for no reason. Just living your life, going into an auto parts store just to buy some Freon, and you bump into another brother. Y'all, they couldn't resolve that issue, no man. Yo, man, what's up? Oh, sorry about the. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get. You need some help with that? I mean, nothing. It's just a bump. They just bumped into each other. Did it have to end this way? I don't know. Well, that's just my the video I wanted to do about that stuff. I'll get y'all thoughts and opinions and stuff. You had had that hell. You get out of nigga, but you got it. Just. It just makes you wonder. It's just I find it to be heartbreaking. Those those two, you know, it's just two out of multiple reports that I've seen. And then the lady, at, like I said, the McDonald's manager at the uh, McDonald's on Moreland Avenue. But anyway, um, today is Sunday, June fifth, two thousand twenty-two. I just wanted to do a quick video, get y'all thoughts and opinion. Well, welcome to Nickelville, y'all. It just it just makes you wonder how could these situations have ended differently. Be careful out there. I know a lot of us live in these black neighborhoods, and um, and I have to venture into these black neighborhoods. Don't get don't get it twisted. Don't think that I'm just sitting up here in the house peeking out the windows. Oh no, I have to leave my house to and venture into these areas. We all have to, and we don't know what might happen, or who we might run into, or who we might just accidentally bump into, and how it could end deadly for no reason at all. I was at Linux Mall yesterday. It wasn't very crowded at the mall yesterday at all. It was, it was kind of a ghost town. And I was there pretty late, too. I was like, my God. It was a Saturday, and the mall was pretty empty, I can say. Um, well, yeah, it was really empty. I went up there to go look at some furniture. Still trying to order furniture. And in November, December, January. I mean, Lord, we can be waiting for yeah, Furniture ain't coming for a long time over here. Y'all going to be sitting in the empty house for a minute. 
Anyway, if you like my video, share it with family members and friends. I'm going to do a video about this furniture hunt I've been having, y'all. And um, it's a lot of people keep telling me to go to Facebook um, Marketplace for furniture. And I might have to start doing that because a lot of stuff is cheap and free. And, and I can get some furniture faster for a whole lot less. Anyway, if you like my video, share it with family members and friends. Today is Sunday, January 5th, the year 2022. I'm out. And I look forward to reading you all's comments.